I beg leave to ask the question standing in my name on the order paper. My Lords, the ONS is charged with the collection and publication of statistics related to the economy, population and society of the UK and is independent from government. The government has made no assessment of the current or future growth of the Muslim or any other faith population in England and its impact. The government recently confirmed in its response to the independent review of Sharia law that Sharia law has uh, no jurisdiction in England and Wales. My Lords, I, I thank the noble lady for that reply, but I'm afraid it isn't really adequate because good Muslims must follow Muhammad's example and impose Sharia law on their hosts when they are, when they are, when they are strong enough. Well, let's talk about it. Um, when they are strong enough to do so, because several of our local authorities will soon be Muslim majority, and because anger is already rising among our Kufa working class at the Islamification of their communities. So first, my lords, can I again ask the government whether they will require all teaching in our mosques and madrasas to be in English? And second, can I yet again ask them to foster an open national debate about Islam, to include our Muslim friends, so that we can all understand with what we may be dealing in a few years' time? Could you set somewhere else for your next question? <laughs> Well, my lords, um, I, 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 I think the, your lordship's house would agree that um, points about good, good Muslims and bad Muslims are really not for this house. I was just wondering if I, in that context, was a good Catholic or a bad Catholic. Um, but I really don't think that that sort of thing has any place in your lordship's house or indeed in, in society. Um, in terms of te uh, English being spoken in madrasas, my lords, we don't prescribe that, but one thing that we do, uh, uh, we do absolutely acknowledge is that English language skills are absolutely fundamental to, being, uh, to taking advantage of all the opportunities of living in modern Britain, getting a job, mixing with people and playing a full part in community life. Um, and in terms of the national debate, my lords, the government has no plans um, to hold a national debate on Islam. Uh, does the noble lady agree with me that this great country of ours always accepted immigrants of different faiths, traditions and cultures, and that tolerance, respecting of difference and accepting the rule of law as determined by Parliament must always be the way we go forward, and we're standing up to Islamophobia, anti-Semitism and any other form of hate that seeks to divide us? Yeah. I could not agree more wholeheartedly with the noble lord. He and I, of Irish descent and first-generation Irish, uh, respectively. Um, in fact, when we look around your lordship's house and, in fact, look at this country, there wouldn't be many of us if we didn't have immigration. Lord, is the minister aware that domestic law in most Muslim-majority countries is based on modern Western legal systems? and that Sharia is actually a moral code that requires Muslims, amongst other things, to be just and fair in their dealings with everyone and always to promote what is good and prevent what is wrong. So will the noble Baroness the Minister join me and the overwhelming majority of this House in celebrating the appointment today of the first British Pakistani born of Muslim parents to hold one of the great offices of state? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I certainly agree with the first part of the Noble Lord's question, and I'm very pleased to be able to join him in welcoming um, Sajid Javid as our new Home Secretary. And may I, while I have an opportunity, also pay tribute to uh, my right honourable friend, Amber Rudd. Yeah. 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 My Lord, would, Bishop, um, would the Minister agree with me that a uh, prerequisite to any intelligent a discussion of Islam or any other religion or to pay attention to the Ninth Commandment, which is that you will not bear false witness against your neighbour. Well, the, the, the right Reverend Prelate is absolutely right. Um, I was just trying to think of my Ten Commandments and um, <laughs> I think I might have forgotten some of them. <laughs> my Lords, talking of national statistics, uh, the noble lady, the Minister, may not be aware that a hundred years ago last week on St George's Day, <laughs> Um, uh, the Navy carried out a huge raid on Zeebrugge, 
and more Victoria Crosses were won on that day than any other day in the First World War, for which I'm sure she would congratulate the Royal Navy. But in that raid, more ships were used than we currently have in the entire Royal Navy. <laughs> and does the noble lady minister believe that the Home Office supports uh, the government view that there should be more ships in the Royal Navy? <laughs> The Noble Lord never loses an opportunity to weave something about the Royal Navy into a question, and I didn't quite think he would manage it today, but he has. And, uh, but I'm very happy to join him um, in paying tribute to the Royal Navy. Could the Minister um, launch an investigation? My Lord, could, could, my Lords, could the Minister launch an investigation into the growth of the people named Pearson in this country and assess what effect it is having on racial harmony. Yeah. <laughs> I get the noble lady's point. My lords, the trouble with your lordship's treatment of Lord Pearson is that you are not going to listen when he actually talks sense. And there are a number of points which he raises which your lordships ought to have the courage to examine and not simply denigrate his approach to them. Uh, one of them is, of course, the implication of democratic trends in this society, which is uh, equally a subject of interest in a totally different context in Northern Ireland, and it is not a subject which would be entirely brushed under the carpet until things change. Well, my lords, I um, most certainly um, was not denigrating the, the noble lord's point, only to say that the points that he made makes are actually um, not helpful in the, in the context of, of anything other than to single out one particular faith uh, in, in society. Um, I think when he said um, democratic, he meant demographic. Um, certainly the de there is demographic um, change in this country, but all to the good, because if we purely had the indigenous population in this country, um, I think we would look, we'd be looking at population decline um, and, and, and therefore um, some major problems of uh, employment need. <coughs> Message